Thanksgiving in the U.S. is this week, meaning more than likely you're going to have some leftovers of turkey or chicken or whatever it is, whatever meat that you have that you'll be serving. Today I'm sharing with you three very different dishes that you can use up that leftover turkey with. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. In all transparency, I am not using turkey just because I didn't want to cook a turkey solely for this video. So I grabbed a couple of rotisserie chickens from Sam's Club. So that just goes to show you that you could use chicken or turkey. This one is a hearty turkey stew or hearty chicken stew in my case. So you need about two cups of cooked turkey or chicken and I'm gonna be slicing up this bacon we've got some flour here some chicken broth this is thyme from my garden and this is a cat you've already had chicken but they haven't seen you have chicken so I'll give you another piece you're welcome okay there you go okay you're gonna need four or five slices of bacon and you're just going to chop this we need two stalks of celery. I could have gotten my chopper out, I guess, but we're not chopping up the carrot very small at all. They actually did it in really large chunks, like super large chunks. I don't wanna go that large. Speaking of my dicer, I've had several people ask in the comments recently what brand it is. It is Mueller, I think is how you say it. it always makes me think of Ferris Bueller. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Anyway, um, it is linked in my Amazon store and my Amazon store is always linked in my description box. So if you're ever looking for anything that I'm using, including like these knives, they are linked in my Amazon store. Now let's peel these carrots and cut them into large chunks. When I say large chunks, like in the picture online, it was this long, it was ridiculous. I don't want something that large. I don't, I want it to be bite size, you know? Otherwise, it's kind of awkward. Now, it says two large potatoes. This one's really large, so I went with like one and a half over here. But I am going to peel these and chop these up into large chunks. Now, let's move over to the stove. You know what? No, I'm not. I need to, we need about a tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves. Leaves? Leaves. We need a tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves. If you have uh, dried, you'll use about a teaspoon. This stew is a little bit different. We're going to finish the stew in the oven and because of that I need to preheat my oven to 350 and the good thing is I'm using my caraway pot so that can go straight into the oven. What we're going to do is cook our bake. Grace, I am trying to film. Yep, you've already had enough chicken. I'm going to cook these four or five slices of bacon here in the bottom of this pan and then we'll move on. Our bacon is pretty much cooked. It doesn't say to remove it but it does say to drain all but two tablespoons of the fat. So I am gonna remove it for now, just so it doesn't burn. I don't want it to burn while we're doing this next step. You and I are gonna have a little chat because now that I think about this, this recipe is strange to me and I wanna go over it with you. But first let's add in our celery, carrots, thyme, and let that cook on about medium to medium low for about five minutes. This recipe did call for leeks as well. I'm not the biggest fan of leeks. I've cooked with them once or twice. They're okay, but I just chose to omit that. So if you wanted to add leeks, you could. But let's talk about the recipe. It says it is British cuisine. So it may just be something that's more common, common there versus here in America. Basically, we're gonna cook this for five minutes and we'll add in some garlic. We're gonna add in some flour, stir it around, add in our chicken stock, bring it to a bowl, add some salt and pepper. Then at that point, it says to add our potatoes. Ooh, by the way, I need to put potatoes in water before they brown, hang on. Okay, I'm back. I put the potatoes in water. Um, let me stir this while I'm talking to you. So it says, at, at that point, once it's come up to a bowl, it says add the potatoes and then put it into the oven at 350 for 45 minutes. Is there a reason why I can't just do like a soft simmer on the stove until my potatoes are cooked? I still haven't decided how I'm gonna do this. Obviously you can't help me because you're not here right now. I kinda need you in my kitchen with me. I don't know, I feel like it doesn't have to go into the oven. It can just stay on the stove top. It's been five minutes. I still haven't made my decision, by the way. I've got a couple of cloves of garlic going in. You know what, I should have done onions. Maybe I'll add a little onion powder. Teaspoon of onion powder. I mean, why not? We're gonna add in our two heaping tablespoons of flour and stir that around. 
and cook it for another minute or so. Okay, we now need this whole carton of chicken broth or four cups of chicken broth. I'm gonna turn my heat back up to about medium high as well. If you have any browned bits at the bottom at this point, you'll scrape it up really well. Ooh, busted. I'm over here snacking <laughs> these cheese it grooves. It's the Zesty Cheddar Ranch. I was hungry, y'all. I did not realize it was in the shot though, so you're welcome for that. Okay, we're gonna bring this up to a bowl. Tell me you snack while you eat too. Snack while you eat? snack while you cook. Okay, it has come up to a bowl, so we're gonna add in a little bit of salt and pepper. I did not use low sodium chicken broth, so I'm not gonna add in too much salt, but let me grind in the pepper as well. Now we're gonna add in our potatoes. I think this might be too many potatoes for the amount of liquid we have. I don't know though, so. This is trial and error, friends. I talked with Steven and asked him his opinion about the whole putting in the oven thing and he's with me. We're just gonna do it on the stove top, but we're just gonna do like a low simmer and put the lid on it, and I think it'll be fine. We also need to add our turkey, or uh, um, our bacon back in, and our chicken, or turkey, in your case, if you're making this with leftover turkey. We got two cups of that. Let's stir that all together. Yeah, I just don't know about doing all of those potatoes. It didn't say what type of potatoes. Maybe they meant a different type, and I just had a really large like super large potato. I don't know. So I think I should have just done one potato. Let's bring this back up to a simmer. And once it does, then I will turn it to about medium low and put the lid on it and allow it to simmer to soften those potatoes for maybe 15 minutes and then I'll come check on it. I've turned the oven back on because I am um, gonna make some crescent rolls. But we're gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. Oh, did I? Oh, it's doing it, okay. It has the timer on there. I guess it's because it's still heating up to 375. But I'm gonna check this after about 15 minutes. We'll see. It has been 15 minutes. I just checked a large potato and it is done. It's ready. I wasn't patient enough to wait on this to cook for 45 minutes in the oven. So that's me. You do whatever your heart desires on that one. But at this point you're done or you can do what I'm gonna do and that is add about a third a cup of heavy cream in. I mean, this is a great way to use up that leftover turkey. I know I'm using chicken, but let's pretend. So as I was in there cooking, he said, I wonder how this would be with turkey. I said, well, that's kind of the point. We're gonna pretend. We're pretending this is turkey. <laughs> they're really good chicken stew. Well, we're saying turkey stew. So turkey stew, chicken stew, it's got a lot of chicken flavor in it. Yeah, it should, like, yeah. Lots of it. It's very, very, very good. I like the thickness of the veggies. Yeah. Yeah, the large really chunks nice. of them. The yeah. large chunks in yeah. there. That's really nice. And they're cooked perfectly. Yes. Really oh, good. This is, we this got is two definitely thumbs a, up. Yeah, definitely a double thumb up there. Okay, is this a go backer? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, this isn't comfort food, uh -huh. it's just happy food. It's not comfort food, it's just happy food. All right, yeah. well, I will take it. Well, I'm excited to dig in my poor little crescent roll. A little soggy <laughs> over here. So Cole said that the potatoes are cooked perfectly because they're still holding together. They're solid on the outside, but then once you bite into them, they just kind of kind of fall apart. And then you've got the carrots that are super soft too. This is the perfect stew to make with leftover chicken or turkey after Thanksgiving. I mean, what a way to kind of change up and not just do plain leftovers. This is a really great idea, so. It just screams poultry flavors. Yeah, yeah. It really does. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Yeah, it's really good. It's for sure a go backer. He's about to head that way now, I think. Won't be long. <laughs> okay, for our second recipe using leftover turkey or chicken, we are going to do a chicken salad or a turkey salad. So you think about chicken salad for lunch, a lighter lunch, why not use the turkey and do the same thing? To get started, we are gonna dice some red onion and some celery. So I'm just gonna use this little dicer just because it makes it a little bit quicker. So I had two stalks of celery. Now I'm just doing a little bit of red onion. That's prepped and ready. Now we're just gonna add about three cups of our cooked turkey or chicken. Again, I'm using a rotisserie. We're gonna add in our onion and celery. Now the recipe calls for about a half a cup of cranberries, the dried cranberries. I'm gonna use what I have here, which I don't even know if it's quite half a cup. I don't know, it might be. I'm gonna do maybe half, like one handful of 
like the craisins, the cranberries. And I'm switching this up and I'm gonna add in some dried cherries too. A sweet subscriber sent me these dried cherries from Michigan. I had no clue that cherries from Michigan were like a big deal, but they are. And these are delicious. I've been sneaking several of them over the last few days. I'll just go grab a handful. Let's just toss this around. And you know, I could have chopped my chicken up a little bit finer than it was, but that's okay. We're gonna go with it. We need about half a cup of mayo. We need about a tablespoon of lemon juice. So I'm gonna add that in. A little bit of salt, maybe a half a teaspoon. A little bit of pepper. And a half a teaspoon or so of garlic powder and onion powder. Okay, let's stir all of that together. I'm so excited about this. I've been craving this for a couple of days ever since I saw this recipe to use with leftover turkey and I thought, oh my gosh, that is such a good idea. So I'm about to have me a turkey salad, turkey salad sandwich. Let me take a little bite. Bon appetit. Mm, I am not mad at that at all. Oh, that is delicious. I'm gonna add the rest of this lemon juice just because. Let's make us a sandwich. So I've got my bread here. If you have leftover rolls from Thanksgiving, this would be a great way to use those. I went in there to my garden and got me some breen. I really love breen. I don't think I'd ever even heard of it before. I have my garden. Hi. Hey. That was a very delayed reaction. I said, does anybody want a chicken salad sandwich? About three minutes later, I hear Steven say, excuse me? <laughs> he was engrossed in work. Yeah, I was typing away. I know. Oh, here, I'll give y'all a closer look. All right, let's hand this to Steven and see what he thinks. Mmm, yeah. That looks really good. See some onions in there. It's like celery. celery. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I, I love celery and I love salad mixed in with my chicken salad just because I like that extra change of texture in there. I'm about to head over to the garden to get me some bream for me a sandwich, but here's a great way to use up that turkey, y'all. Mm -hmm. I've got one more recipe to use your leftover turkey or chicken with, and this one is all in one pot and it sounds so good. This is gonna be a one pot turkey or chicken tetrazzini. You've already had chicken. Yes, you have. Don't lie to them. Are you lying? You want one more piece of chicken? Okay. One more piece. Okay, to get started, I'm going to clean off these mushrooms as much as I can, and then we are going to thinly slice them. I was hoping that my grocery store would have some already sliced because that's just so much easier. They didn't. So, here we are. The recipe calls for dried thyme, but since I have fresh, I'm gonna use that instead. This, this part is not fun. This just takes forever. I'll be back. I am gonna remove the stems just because that's personal preference. I know when you buy them sliced, they usually still have the stems and that's fine. So we just need to thinly slice the mushrooms. Okay, that's probably more than a cup. Well, I don't know, that's about right. I have to ask, I've seen these little contraptions that they sell on Amazon where it's supposed to take all the leaves off for you. But does that actually work? Because if it does, I'll, I'll get one gladly. So how effective are those things? You have to tell me in the comments below. Now we need to dice this onion. We're done here, so let's move over to the stove. Okay, so we've got some olive oil. I'm heating this large soup pot to about medium high. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil enough to cook or soften our mushrooms and our onion. We're gonna let this hang out for three or four minutes just to soften everything. I'll come over here and mess with it, kind of stir it around every couple of minutes. Okay, we're gonna add in about a teaspoon of garlic. It's been about three or four minutes. We're also gonna add in some seasonings. So we've got that thyme, we've got some dried parsley, and then salt and pepper. Excuse me. I didn't sneeze towards the food just in case you were wondering. I did turn away. Now we're gonna add in one and a half cups of low sodium chicken broth. And if you have any browned bits on the bottom, just scrape it up at this point. I'm also gonna add in two cups of, you can just do regular milk or you can do cream. I'm just gonna do half and half. And we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. So I did get myself a kitchen scale, which is Really nice to have. The recipe does not call for this whole pound of pasta. I've got spaghetti here. It says 10 to 12 ounces. So, actually, let's turn this back off. I just remembered. Put that on there first. Now turn it on. We're gonna measure out 
10 to 12 ounces or pour it all over the pour it all over the counter okay it just came to a simmer so let's add in our spaghetti noodles let me grab the ones i'm throwing all over the place over here and we're going to cover this and cook it for 10 to 15 minutes till our spaghetti is done okay this is steaming a lot so i'm actually going to turn it down just a little bit more let's take the lid off you do want to stir this every so often it's been going for a little less than half the time some of these noodles are stuck together so let's break that up let's put the lid back on there and let it continue to do its thing it has been about 13 minutes we're gonna add in first about a half a cup of shredded parmesan cheese i shredded that a little bit earlier and don't you worry i did pay the cheese tax she got her cheese. We're gonna add in two cups of either chicken or turkey that's already cooked and just stir to combine. I've got some parsley that we can put on top for some color and that is dinner. Let's let that warm through. It's actually lunch, it's 1230. We're gonna eat this for lunch today. You make it for breakfast, I don't care. But today is our lunch and then of course it would be a great dinner. Okay, Steven is stuck on a call at the moment. He'll be in here to eat in just a few minutes but I didn't wanna wait. So I'm gonna dig in and let y'all know what I think. I'm not Steven, I have to blow it off. Creamy, mushroomy, chickeny. This is good. It is definitely not saucy. I feel like the sauce all pretty much kind of got absorbed into the pasta, which is not a bad thing. It's not dry, but it's not super, there's not a lot of liquid to it. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever made tetrazzini before no, or not. I've never had that. I don't know what that is. Sounds like a video game. <laughs> That's good. Ain't it? Yeah. Tetrazzini weenie. <laughs> I love the mushroom flavor. Mm. Oh, well, I ain't got a napkin that, in here for you. That's delicious. It is delicious. Mm -hmm. I bet this has got to be some kind of Italian. <laughs> yes, it's an Italian dish. Yeah, definitely get the mushroom flavor. Not overpowering mushrooms. No, it's like really good and balanced. Yeah, you know? it is. Cream, the mushroom, and chicken. Chicken, yep. Ma'am, you've had chicken and cheese already. If you have a different idea or something you always do with your leftovers, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that subscribe button before you go, and I will see y'all next week. Bye.